Welcome everybody to this short webinar on libraries, IFLA and the Sustainable Development Goals in 2019. As underlined, this is just a short update. There will be plenty of information, so if you miss something, please don't worry, you can listen again to the recording at the end. I also hope that there will be time for questions at the end. Please use the chat box in order to ask these. If we don't have time to cover them all, you can email me as well, and I will share my email address at the end on the final slide. Finally, given the time, I will try not to repeat too many things you've probably already heard before. If something is not clear, we'll show you at the end how to find some of the key documents you might need. That's me. So, the Sustainable Development Goals. 17 goals, 169 targets, 232 indicators. These have been a major focus of our advocacy work for the last few years. This is because they are both an affirmation and an opportunity for libraries. They're an affirmation. So there's been a question. Could, could I ask that everyone, I'm going to mute anyone else who's on here. Okay, I'm going to continue. Thank you. So the SDGs are an affirmation because for the first time, we have a major document signed by all UN governments that underlines the need, uh, the importance of access to information, not just in SDG 1610, which comes under the SDG focused on peace, justice and strong institutions. This explicitly talks about access to information, but is often interpreted as meaning access to government information. But in about 20 other targets across the SDGs, where the importance of access, both the physical contribution, both the physical connection and the skills and rights to use it is crucial. This is exactly the access, the meaningful access, that libraries are providing every day to everyone. And they're an opportunity. Because all governments have signed up to them, all 193 member states of the United Nations, they've given a promise to libraries, to their users, to support access to information. And this is not just a promise that can be forgotten, buried under new promises, because the member states also agreed on an ongoing process of review and reporting. Through the specific targets and indicators, it is possible to follow progress, to see who is moving ahead and who is standing still or falling behind. And this process gives libraries an opportunity to talk about what we are doing, about, about what we are doing, to explain this in terms that our politicians understand, to raise awareness of how important it is to gain support. The highlight of the process for following progress in implementing the SDGs oh. is the high-level political forum held in the middle of July each year. This brings together ministers and senior officials from member states, the UN itself, its agencies, and partners from across civil society. A key feature of these meetings are voluntary national reviews. Each year, between 40 and 50 countries volunteer to come to the United Nations and talk about what they are doing to implement the SDGs and what progress they are making. These are opportunities for libraries, both in the preparation and in the presentation of these. To prepare a voluntary national review, member states must put together a report this should not only look at progress on the specific SDGs, but also on how well the country has implemented the broader SDG framework into policy making. What's most interesting for libraries is that they should talk about how they have built partnerships and engage different actors. They should also talk about how they are promoting the cross-cutting factors that support development across the board, such as access to information. To draft the report, governments are supposed to consult broadly, and this consultation offers an opportunity for library associations and libraries to get involved, to provide input and views on how effectively people in their countries have access to information, on what they are already doing, on what more could be done. The process varies from country to country. Maybe there are meetings, Maybe the team organising the reports only welcomes written contributions. There is also an opportunity in the presentation, as you can see in the picture. 
a number of countries, when they come to New York and sit on the stage, as you can see, have a civil society representative with them. Indeed, this is seen as best practice. So why shouldn't we have a library person on the stage? This is what Irina Zubchevich from the team running Voluntary National Reviews at UN headquarters suggested in our global convening in June. So, the crucial information, who is doing a review? This year, 42 countries have volunteered. So, if you see your flag here, you're on the list. You have this opportunity. IFLA has produced a brief on voluntary national reviews to help you understand the process, but the first thing to do will be to contact the person or team responsible for the SDGs in your own government. Find out what their plans are for the review. Impress them with how active libraries are, with what you are doing to promote the SDGs, what you are doing to deliver them. Show that libraries are partners for development in general and their best friends in producing the review. And of course, let us know what you do and we'll be happy to offer advice and ideas. We've already produced a brief on this and we'll show you how to find it at the end. The second key feature of the High Level Political Forum are the FOCUS SDGs. Each year, the meeting will pay particular attention to a certain number of them. This allows for deeper discussion than if they try to look at all 17 at once. For IFLA, this is an opportunity to show how access to information is important across the board. And 2019 is going to be a really special year with a focus on education, employment, equality, climate change, and access to information itself. What does this mean? So of course, the high level political forum, there'll be discussion sessions on each of these. Voluntary national reviews, for those of you in countries doing them, will also likely focus on these subjects. It's a great opportunity for libraries here. But there will also be a focus throughout the year there are likely to be major conferences on each of these subjects organized by the key UN agencies, such as UNESCO, the International Labour Organization, and others. Each of these is an opportunity. We don't have many details yet, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. And if one is held near you, we'll look to get you involved. There will also be regional forums on sustainable development. Each of the UN's five re regional economic and social commissions will organise one of these, another great opportunity for libraries and to talk about libraries. Again, when we have dates, we want to work with you to ensure that libraries are represented, that we can organise side events, that we can get involved in discussions. Librarians were present at all five meetings in 2018, for example. And in each case, it was a great opportunity to make contact with government, build up connections, and in a way that's rarely possible at home. All of these events also help us globally, because these thematic meetings, these regional meetings, will all produce declarations and statements that shape what happens in New York. The last big thing, or things in 2019, are the reviews of the 2030 agenda as a whole, as well as of the data framework. As we mentioned at the beginning, can I ask whoever is not on mute to please mute? Thank you, sorry. So as mentioned at the beginning, the SDGs are more than a document, they're a process. And as part of this, member states decided in 2015 that it was healthy to think every few years about what was working and what could be done better. So they decided that in 2019, as soon as all of the SDGs had been in focus at least once at the High Level Political Forum, that there should be a reflection on how everything was working. Now, clearly the process is not perfect. The voice of civil society at the UN isn't as strong as it should be. There is no mechanism for forcing governments to respect their commitments, or naming and shaming them even. Voluntary national reviews are highly variable. And while some subjects receive a lot of attention, others, such as culture, receive barely any. These sorts of issues will all be up for discussion when the review is launched next year. A set of terms of reference will be agreed at General Assembly in 2019. This in turn will steer the results. 
For libraries, the crucial priority must be to defend references to access to information. There is always a risk that it gets forgotten, given that SDG 16 as a whole was already controversial in 2015. We should argue for greater attention to culture. At the moment, the only reference is to safeguarding cultural and natural heritage together. And we should speak up in favour of inclusive development policies at all levels, including libraries, both in designing and in implementing policies. And this is something we need you to be doing with your governments as much as we are doing with the UN. Data is also on the agenda. I mentioned at the beginning the 232 indicators. These are intended to provide concrete ways of measuring success. There are some useful ones in there. Measures of how many people have access to the internet, for example, of literacy rates. However, they are far from perfect. Many of the SDG targets that include access to information do not have indicators that measure this. And to give you two examples on some of the key targets, such as 16.10 and 11.4, access to information and safeguarding cultural heritage, respectively. In these cases, the measures chosen just aren't particularly helpful to libraries. On 16.10, for example, the indicators only talk about the existence of laws on access to government information and attacks on journalists and human rights defenders. These, of course, are very important, but they don't talk about access to information in the way that we understand it. And on 11.4, the indicator is spending on museums, archives and heritage sites, but not libraries, because the UNESCO statistics framework places our institutions in the same category as publishing. IFLA will be engaging in discussions at the global level, but you can help nationally. If your government is designing its own statistics for measuring progress, then highlight indicators relevant to libraries. You could use the data provided to the Library Map of the World. You could go further and propose tools like satisfaction surveys. Let us know if you find out about a possibility to get involved and we'll be very happy to help. So, what does all this mean for 2019 and for you? We've talked about a number of opportunities for action already, but here's where we bring everything together. So, we've created a timeline. This gives you an idea of what will be happening at different levels global, regional, and national over the next year, and where IFLA's priorities will be. So you can see that each row here relates to a different level or theme, with the bottom focusing on IFLA's priorities and the work of libraries. I'd like to underline at this point that we will also include a link to this, this page in particular, which will also explain some of the acronyms. So to start off with now, September 2018, we already have some work to do. This webinar is our opportunity to set out the programme. But even next week, we have both the third anniversary of the signing of the 2030 Agenda on Tuesday and the International Day of Universal Access to Information on Friday 28th of September. IFLA will be publishing blogs on both days underlining the role of libraries in promoting the SDGs and the need to support access to information properly. But we'd like to encourage you to get involved. Some of you may have clicked on the link in the email inviting you to this webinar. Others may have seen it on our website. But on 25th of September, the third anniversary of the signing of the 2030 Agenda, there is a day of action for the SDGs. We'll be sharing a poster which you can print and adapt if you want and put up in your libraries. We'd love you to take photos and share them on social media. You can use the hashtags shown on the screen. And there's also an opportunity for you to highlight your actions on the map produced by one of our partner organisations in New York. You can find the link on the page for this webinar. These don't need to be big actions, and of course you can use it to celebrate things that you are already doing. Book displays, discussions, training sessions, writing articles, going on the radio or television. It's a great opportunity to get your work noticed and recognised. Through the last months of the year, 
we then will hope that libraries and countries involved in voluntary national reviews will be able to make contacts and make sure that you're involved in the preparation process for these. It's a great time before things become too busy to make those links. There's work for the rest of us too, because as you know, we are looking for SDG stories, evidence of how libraries are delivering the SDGs every day, everywhere. We want to fill up the map on the library map of the world with color and focus in particular on those key SDGs for next year, education, employment, equality, climate change, access to information. You are essential to this. Your contributions won't just help us in New York and Geneva, they will also help your colleagues, everyone at this webinar and outside in their own advocacy. So please do take a look at the manual and submit your ideas. And as we get into next year, the work continues. Those in voluntary national review countries, we hope, will be working closely with their governments to ensure libraries and access to information are recognized and perhaps get invited to the 2019 High Level Political Forum. Others will have the opportunity to attend regional and thematic meetings. We have a guide on how to make the most of these and we'll show you where at the end. And of course, you can all help through telling your governments about the importance of access, through highlighting library relevant indicators, and of course, through your stories. So that's a lot of information, probably too much for the 30 minutes we've allocated and certainly the 20 minutes for which I've been speaking. So to close, we want to explain where you can find out more. All of our briefing documents can be found under the Publications tab in the Libraries and Development section of the IFLA website. Here, you can see a link to the timeline we've just shown to you, but also briefings on VNRs and UN data and how to make the most of going to international meetings. There are also PowerPoint presentations and some of the scripts from the Global Convening in New York in June. So, I encourage you to take a look and of course ask questions or suggest other things that could be useful for you. And most importantly, stay in touch. We want to know how you are getting on. We want to know about your questions and your activities. We're happy to post or retweet things from our lib for dev Twitter feed, of course, as well. And finally, as mentioned below, you have our email addresses at the bottom. I hope this webinar has been useful for you and, as underlined, you will be able to listen again afterwards. But for now, I'm glad that we have a few minutes left for questions, so I encourage you to put these in the chat box. So if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to add them here. Perfect. We'll give you a couple of minutes to think. Just while you're thinking, um, for those of you who are not uh, first language English speakers, I would just like to let you know that in 40 minutes, we will also do a version of this webinar in French. And then at half past four, so in trying to work out, two hours and 40 minutes, we will do a version of this webinar in Spanish. So you can also do this. And as my colleague has underlined, we can also collect by email later. So there's one, there's two useful questions. So firstly, we've got the question, can you clarify again on our contacts in government from Ghana? So each country has a different approach to how it manages the sustainable development goals internally. In some, situ in some situations, oh, I can I ask again for people to mute their microphones if they're not, so we don't get noise from outside, thank you. So each government manages the SDGs from a separate bit of, uh, from a separate bit of government. Sometimes it's something that sits with the environment ministry. 
Sometimes it sits with the development ministry, sometimes with the economy ministry, sometimes in the prime minister's or the president's office. So to a large extent, this is something that you will have to look into and you can explore. What we can do for IFLA headquarters is try to find out who is coming to the UN in order to talk about the SDGs from your country. In the specific case of Ghana, I'm glad to say that at the global convening, the ambassador, um, Martha Pobey, if I remember correctly, came along to the meeting and met with Helena Asamoah Hassan, the executive director of MAFLIA. So that's a useful contact, and we can try and find out who's the best person to talk to in Accra through her. So I recommend, first of all, use your knowledge of your national systems to try and work out who is the best contact, who might be responsible. But if you're not getting anywhere, please do get in touch with us, and we can try and find a way of identifying a contact. Secondly, the question about how successful we are in gathering data for the library map of the world. This has been, this is an area on which a colleague works, on which a colleague leads, but the view from within IFLA is that this has been far more successful than we imagined. We have data from around 100 countries already, so that's more than half. And in this, most of the really big, the most populous countries. Clearly, this is a process that's developing and we will keep on updating the data from year to year and it will become a more regular occurrence. It will become a more of a routine thing to do. But the data that we're getting already is really, it's really changing the way that we are able to advocate about libraries. For the first time, we have reliable figures that we can cite. So it's proving to be a success and it's, 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 really, doing, it's really doing almost better than we ex hoped or expected. So we've had another question about are there plans to engage civil society organizations to educate the populace and policy makers about the indispensability of libraries to accomplish the SDGs? And that's from Library and You in Nigeria. So this is something that we have worked on as part of IFLA's international advocacy program. A key function of that and those who took part in the first round of workshops signed commitments in order to go out and talk about the SDGs. And if you look through some of the IAP updates, there are some really good examples of libraries that have held seminars, they've held training events, they've held workshops for children, they've displayed books, they've encouraged people to talk about the SDGs. People have gone on TV, they've gone on radio, they've made furniture, they've made t-shirts. So there are some really fantastic ideas out there. This is something that we're going to be keen to keep on doing. We will try and bring together some of the really good ideas that we've heard about over the last two years. Some of the ideas that were pre presented in a special session at Kuala Lumpur in this, on this subject. And hopefully then work with you to develop a really effective campaign. What's important to add here, and this will likely be the subject of our blog for the 25th of September, is the role of libraries is telling the UN about how great a job we are doing, about how great a job libraries are, are doing in promoting sustainability and promoting the SDGs. It's sometimes difficult to, it's something you only realize when you go to New York, but this is actually a huge priority for the UN Secretariat. This is one of their biggest projects. And they are very, very grateful for anyone who is popularizing it, for anyone who's talking about it. And so, again, simply by talking about the SDGs, we gain a lot of, we gain a lot of, um, we gain a lot of support, we gain a lot of sympathy. So this is something that we will continue to work on and, I know that Library and You have produced some fantastic materials, and so we will look to bring these together and share these really good ideas for how libraries can make the difference. So, I'm gonna, this is good. There are so many questions I have to scroll up. Um, so, question Could you please tell me whether the infographic can be translated into other languages by librarians from different countries? Yes, of course. Um, 
almost all of the work that IFLA produces is Creative Commons licensed. So we are more than happy to send you editable files so that you can create your own and use them. We have a question from Gloria. How can we get people on board? Because the whole idea of the SDGs does not interest a lot of people. Now, that is, that's an incredibly valid point. I think, and I know that this is something that, especially for people in developed countries, they tend to see that the SDGs is something for the developing world. The issue is the content of the SDGs, things like education, agriculture, food, health, energy, sustainable communities, these are all things that interest everybody. And a thing that we've really discovered with the SDGs is sometimes it's talking about the UN, sometimes it's saying the UN SDGs that makes the difference, but sometimes it's generally focusing on the development, focusing on the difference that this makes for communities, the difference that this makes for people in their real lives. So. This is a key lesson from a lot of our advocacy work in general. When we are talking about the SDGs, when we're using them, we need to think about what's important to the people we're talking to. So politicians probably will care more about the UN. They like going to the UN. They like being on stage and being admired for all they're doing. When we're talking to people in the street, focus on the actual subjects, focus on health, focus on education, focus on the things that really make a difference to them, that they notice, that they care about. So, another question, I think this will probably have to be almost the last one. Are there tools to manage or measure our progress and impacts made in the course of advocating for the inclusion of libraries to accomplish the SDGs? And that's another one from Library and You in Nigeria. So, we have, in the course of the International Advocacy Programme, carried out, we've tried to measure the difference, firstly, what people have been doing, the sorts of activities that have been carried out, the number of people who've been reached, who've been affected by this. But we've also tried to look at some of the outputs. And this has been at a basic level. It's things like, are libraries being included in national development plans? If the government comes up with a strategy for how it wants to build more sustainable growth, are libraries included? And we have some figures about this, and we've produced a brochure based on information from participants in our international advocacy program, which shares some of this data. We will also be doing a broader evaluation of the international advocacy program in order to of the international advocacy program in order to get a sense of what's been successful, where we can do more. So we do have some indicators in there and we will continue to we will be interested in hearing from you what works, what you feel is actually helping us get places, as that's what we need to do in order to advocate more effectively. So the last question this is going to be, um, in talking about access to information, the content and organization of the information is very crucial because if there is information, if information is not created in the proper format and organized in such a way for use, access becomes a challenge. So how are we going to work alongside to make sure that access, there's not only access, but also that information is organized in such a way as to be useful to people. That is a, it's an incredibly relevant question. And in particular, it's incredibly relevant for libraries. There is often an assumption that simply having access to the internet, that's your problem solved. And we know perfectly well that there is so much information on the internet it's not necessarily helpful, especially for people who don't feel comfortable or confident or have the skills. It's also easy to forget, especially um, I come from the UK, it's easy to forget coming from the West that the internet is dominated by Western information. There's not enough information from other parts of the world. People may simply not find the information they need on the internet. And this is where there's such a strong case for libraries 
because libraries understand their communities. Libraries are the ones who know what people are looking for, how they search, and what format, what language is most effective. We recently put out a short article for the International Day of Democracy. We recently put out a short article for the International Day of Democracy, which actually underlined the role, how important libraries can be in helping make sure that, for example, parliamentary information, information about laws, information about debates on legislation, which may make very little sense for someone who doesn't understand this. Thanks to librarians, it becomes accessible and people can actually engage and take part in the democratic process. So I think your question is almost, the question is almost, it's a confirmation of why libraries are so important. And it's an argument that we cannot make often enough that simply an internet connection is not enough. You need libraries, you need intermediaries to use a term that's been that gets used a reasonable amount. You need these these actors, these people who can make the link between the, the universe of information out there and the needs of users and support them to actually turn access into development. So I think we've run through our half hour. What we will do is, as soon as this is done, we will get the recording online as soon as possible. I would encourage, as before, anyone who wants to listen again in French to do so in half an hour. Uh, anyone who wants to listen in Spanish to do so in two and a half hours. And please do, as said, ask us your questions by email. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.